Hi, it's Mr. Beck. We're going to talk about single slit interference or single slit diffraction today. Uh, hopefully you've already taken care of double slit interference and Young's equation and you're somewhat familiar with that because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making some comparisons that hopefully will make single slit diffraction both understandable as well as uh, you'll see how to calculate and compare it to the equations you already use for double slit. So in single slit diffraction, what we have is light coming along. These are plane waves, so we've already got them in straight lines coming in. But when that wave hits the single slit, uh, in this case, I have an opening here. And when the light hits that single slit, we're going to use a concept called Huygens' principle. And Huygens' principle says that every individual point on the wavefront acts like its own point source. So we kind of used this with double slit. So when it went through the double slit, we said, oh, the opening of the slit, that's going to act like a point source. And then what we got was we got those uh, waves that came out this way and interfered with one another. And so we got the, the brights and the darks and all of that. So I'm not going to rehash that, but just remember that that's what we had. So if we have every point acting as its own point source, what we can do is we can, instead of looking at the whole slit altogether, what we're going to look at is only the top point and then a point halfway down. So the top point and then a point halfway down. From there, we could draw a little triangle like we did before, and we could see the path length difference between those two paths where one, if we measure from this point on the screen all the way back along line three, we see we get to the point on the top. And if we measure from the screen along line four, we get to the point on the bottom, the difference between those two path lengths, they will be equal up until the point where three gets to the, the point and where four gets to this point on the triangle. And those are going to be equal. So that leaves our uh, difference in path length just being that little section right there, the path length difference. So that's what we're interested in. Now, according to that, we're going to get the same sort of uh, equation for double slit interference that we had before where x equals m lambda l over d, and we could do that. And so what we see is that over that, those two points, I'm going to get a minimum here where the line light from three and four would be off by say half a wavelength. Um, and half a wavelength would give me destructive interference. So if we find that place with a, with a minimum, that's going to be half a wavelength from those two points. But instead of just three and four, what we could do is we could go ahead and move down point by point by point. Let's look at what happens when we talk about the light coming from the middle and the light coming from the bottom. If we have those two points, then again, we're going to have a distance along four and then a distance along this unlabeled line. I don't know, I could call that five. But from four to five, what we're going to find is we're going to find that this little section here and this little section here are going to give me what we call the same path length difference. So since it's the same path length difference from the middle to the bottom as it is from the top to the middle, both of those uh, point sources will contribute to a minimum at this point on the screen. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to match point by point. We're going to match the top with the middle and then slightly down with slightly below the middle and then slightly below that with slightly below that. And you can see that for all of those combinations, we could have each pair of points giving me a minimum at this point on the screen. So that is why single slit interference works, is that we can treat that whole big slit as a bunch of tiny little points and then match them up pair by pair by pair. And so overall, the net is when we add up all those points, we do get some location that's going to be a minimum when that path length difference is going to be a half of a wavelength. So we're going to use the same equation, x equals m lambda l over d. But in this case, x is still going to be the distance from the center bright fringe. And still in the center, we could match up the outside points and then the points slightly inside and then the points slightly inside that and work our way in towards the middle. And we could see that we're always going to get constructive interference directly in the middle. So the middle is going to be bright. But when we get off to this point x that we have from the middle, we can say x equals m lambda l over d, but when x, when, sorry, when m is one, instead of getting what we would get before if we had a double slit, x equals m lambda l over d, if m was one, we would have gotten a bright. Now with the single slit, we're going to get a dark where we would have gotten a bright with the double slit of the same width. So that's the key. 
is that for single slit, you'll get a dark where you used to get a bright. But the pattern's slightly different because we have to start out here at m equals 1 in order to get our first dark, as opposed to m equals 1 half. Notice nothing's happening in here. So if we just compare, sorry, so if we just compare a single slit of entire width d with a double slit where the slits are separated by d, we're still going to use the equation x equals m lambda l over d. But let's take a look at these patterns. In the center, we still get bright. So the center is bright for both of them, x equals m lambda l over d, when m equals 0. When m equals 1 half, the double slit would be dark. That's what we're used to, is the double slit being dark at 1 half. But the single slit is still going to be bright at 1 half. So we don't get anything interesting happening. So it's bright at 0, bright at 1 half. And then when we get to m equals 1, the double slit is going to be bright. And that's where I'm going to get the first dark on the single slit. So the double slit is bright where the single slit is dark at m equals 1. At m equals 1 and a half, the double slit is dark again. That's what I would expect. But this is where the single slit is going to have its first bright on the outside. So for the single slit, for m equals 0, it's bright. For m equals a half, it's still bright. And for m equals 1, that's where I'm getting at my first dark. So the first dark in the single slit is where m equals 1. So that's going to be the difference between single slit and double slit, is that the double slit pattern is, as you expected, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is bright, and a half, 1 and a half, 2 and a half, 3 and a half is dark. In a single slit, the center is bright, and the first dark happens where you'd expect the first bright, where m equals 1. So m equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will give you darks with the single slit, um, and then your brights are going to be one, a, a half, sorry, zero, a half is still bright, and then one and a half is going to be bright, and two and a half is going to be bright. So if you're looking for the second bright uh, outside the center, then you're going to have to go to two and a half instead of two. So that's going to be the difference between single slit and double slit. The other thing that's going to be different is you notice that the center of a single slit is very bright, and it drops off very quickly as I get off to my fringes on the side. With the double slit, it drops off less sharply as I move off to either side. So the single, single slit gets dimmer quicker. So I hope you know now how to compare single slit and double slit with uh, x equals m lambda l over d, same equation, but in the single slit, d is the distance separating, it's the whole width of the single slit, and for the double slit, it's the distance between the slits, but again, same equation.